Hey guys, welcome to season two of Blessed Are the Geek. For this season, we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to be interspersing a few live episodes here and there, along with our uh, quote-unquote studio episodes uh, with our older format as well. Hope you guys enjoy this. For our first live episode, we were planning on having a pretty large group come out to reboot uh, in downtown Macon to stream the live uh, podcast and uh, talk about it and have speakers and have a big kind of setup and uh, only a few people showed up. So we just gathered those few people and all kind of sat together and just kind of talked about uh, whatever was on our minds at the time that night. Don't forget to go check us out on Facebook. We have a Facebook group, Blessed Are the Geek. And currently this month, we're playing a video game monthly of Kirby's Adventure on the NES. At the end of March, we're going to put up another poll, have people vote on the next game for April. So I hope you guys can join us for that. It's a ton of fun. Uh, we're going to be doing a special podcast where we talk about Kirby's Adventure and maybe the Kirby franchise at the end of the month as well. Anyway, without further ado, I hope you guys like our second season of Blessed Are the Geek. So like we're we're running. Okay. We're running now. This is this is gonna be our eighth episode. But it's our first episode in our second season. So welcome to season two, everybody. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Ian. Um, say hi. Hi yeah. Ian. <laughs> uh, Not overused joke at all. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so this is actually really kind of um, put together super last minute because we were supposed to stream this podcast um, live here for we're here in reboot today. We were supposed to stream it live online, and then the internet wasn't working, and then it wasn't working so bad that like for neither computer for me to like run it live. So uh, we just decided to record it, and then nobody showed up, and then the one guy who was gonna sit down with me doesn't didn't want to be on here, who might show up occasionally to say something <laughs> in a minute. But, you know, uh, no calling out, don't worry. No so, names will right. be listed. So then Ian was like, uh, yeah, I guess I can pity, be a guest, <laughs> be a pity guest. So, and I'm still getting over the flu and bronchitis, and I think nobody got time for that. Yeah, oh God, that hit hard. The entire town was, yeah. like, if you look at our, our trivia numbers last week, every one of our trivia shows is like, 20 to 30 less people. Like No, I believe it. At work, like a third of the people were gone every day last yeah, week for it's, the same reason. It's insane. It's February. The flu should be over at this I, point. No, February is a, is a winter month. That, only because the groundhog said so. We were supposed to... No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, so you have... Um, so you have December, January, February is your winter months. You have March, April, May is your spring months. June, July, August, summer... And September, October, November as your uh, fall months. I mean, sure, but it should be on its way out at this point. Like, it should. the flu I... shouldn't be spiking look, at the look, end of the winter. If there's months. anybody who's going to agree with you right now, it's <laughs> definitely freaking me. After a week of having it, yes, I believe it should be on the way out too. Doesn't mean it is or it isn't. Mm. Um, but anyway, so um, yeah. Since uh, <laughs> I can see, again, you know, we had no topics uh, prepared to talk about, but all the better since, that we're not recording, you know. Right? <laughs> no, we're not streaming it. Well, s one thing that I had prepared uh, that I thought about, but we haven't talked about that happened last week, is the SpaceX Falcon oh Heavy my launch. God, yes. So I don't know if you heard this, but I heard something interesting the other day on Reddit, which is that Falcon Heavy is a way for him to say, like, fucking heavy? <laughs> That's what I heard. See, I always used to... In the beginning, Elon Musk seemed like an alien to me, but I swear, like, the more famous he gets, the more human he seems, so honestly, no, 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 no. I'm willing to believe it at this point. I, I, I saw something else on, like, Gizmodo or something today that said, like, if there's anybody, and I totally agree with this, if there's anybody who is a modern-day Tony Stark, it's Elon Musk. 
Bro, I am so excited. I get to live in the Iron Man age. Oh, I know, right? Like, I, I, we are still young. Like, we're going to get to live through this entire thing. Oh, I know. Wherever it leads us. But you got you to gotta take the bad with the good, though. So if we have a modern-day Elon Musk Iron Man, there's got to be some kind of Iron Monger or whatever villain to come in that's, like, wearing <laughs> some super crazy suit. Maybe that's what causes Elon Musk to finally create the Iron Man suit that we all need. So, again, if he goes missing for a couple of weeks, yeah, you know, we're just going to start combing the desert. Yeah. And I hope we literally start combing the desert like they did the Spaceballs. <laughs> We ain't fighting shit. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, and not only did the, did we launch the SpaceX rocket last week, but he's like, yeah, we gotta simulate the weight somehow. <laughs> Fucking throw a car on there. <laughs> what are we gonna do with the car? Oh no, we're uh, we actually just started the podcast. Oh, yep. No, you're good. Yeah. Um, so to simulate all the weight on the rocket. We'll throw a car in. What are, what are you going to put in the car, Elon? The Stig? <laughs> Did you see the picture? No. You mean like like, like Top Gear Stig? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the picture. No, right. It's the Stig is in a car in space now. He would Playing be... David Bowie. Right now, in Wait. space, he's listening to Space Odyssey. And in the glove box, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> Man. Okay. If Stig's gonna be the first person to colonize Mars, I am 100% okay with that. That makes him the Stig! I just realized! Because, like, every time they inter- introduce the Stig on Top Gear, it's like, this is the man that's pleased every woman that's ever <laughs> set foot on the planet, right? It's always, like, some crazy yeah. thing about the Stig. So now that's one thing it can add to his resume is, like, <laughs> oh, he's the guy that drove a Tesla in space, you know? <laughs> that's, that's actually really appropriate that it's the Stig. Okay. Real shit, because I don't know science. I don't. Would a car work in space? No, absolutely not. No. 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 Why? Not to derail the conversation. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. okay. But okay. So, so you mean, so... So if I you, so turn if, the key, the battery would presumably turn on. But if I put my foot on the gas, would I go... No, I, no, 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 because... Would it explode? Not, no, 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 because here's what happens. Um... And I know I know an older carburetor engine better than a fuel injection engine, but I think but they're really similar. So <coughs> everything would work up until the fuel going into the uh, the piston chain, the combustion chamber, yeah. or whatever. Because at that point, you actually have to have a mixture of fuel and air, a, a proper mixture of fuel and air, uh, for that to combust properly to have your engine turn. So okay. No, it's not technically possible to have a space ro- to a car. <laughs> Unless the car was electric, which the which? Tesla is! <laughs> so. Okay, then. So, they, they're really getting ready for this, aren't they? Yeah, yeah I mean... Actually, yeah. Look, we've it, been doing Rainbow Road for how long, and we're just now making no, this yeah, reality? Yeah, the moment we find out that there's a solar-powered electric Tesla, oh, yeah. that's when we know he's ready for Mars. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic. I, I don't think that would be that hard to do. I mean, if he, if he could... He simulated the weight just now, right? Yeah. So. No, I mean, yeah, we're just gonna and also, do like, donuts around the Mars rover. That'd be amazing, right? Um, you, you know, I didn't, I didn't like know what happened. Like, I, I wasn't paying attention to this whole launch thing until like the day after it happened. It was kind of right. It was like a real surprise kind of thing. I mean, so I didn't know about it either, but I at least saw the day of. Right. Right. Yeah. So. So I saw the day after, and I just saw the picture of the stig in the car with, you know, with the earth in the background, and I was like, genuinely, I was like, did somebody actually drive a car and, like, orbit the earth and, like, come back? Right, right. Somebody had to. Mm -hmm. One one thing you forgot, though, is, like, you said in the glove box there was whatever. Yeah. You forgot that little thing in, like, the little, where the GPS would go. Right. said, don't panic. Oh, he said where where the GPS usually goes in the car, it says don't panic. Um, to go along with the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy yeah. in the glove box. It's pretty there cool. many references in that one launch. So. Yeah. I, I, have you read those books? No, I have not. Come sit over here. Come sit over here. <laughs> Be in the microphone. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna talk... Hey, grab, grab one of those chairs, since you're, since, so you're, like, on level and on par with us. We're, we're getting Tyler, right? Yeah. We're getting Tyler to join us. Uh, I may have asked Kirk. <laughs> It's not fair that everybody knows my name and I don't know everybody else's name. It's kind of aggravating, really. Um, oh, yeah. 
So, what were, what were you saying? So, what, how the Space Age launch, yeah, Space Age launch had like so many references to no, other I, sci-fi things. But then I asked you, like, have you read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? No, no. I, the only thing I know about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is the one movie they made like six plus years ago. Which was with uh, Martin Freeman as, yeah. um, what was the guy's name? Um, Martin? No, <laughs> no, but it was no, but it was actually pretty similar yeah, to that. No, it that's, was that's, like that was a serious answer there. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, Martin Freeman's character in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. What was the what's the name of the main character? Uh, it's starting to kill me now. Oh, wait, most, not most of the character. Huh? No, 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 oh, no. no, Martin Freeman's character. Yeah. 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 Who's the main guy in Hitchhiker's? This is so boring for people to listen to. <laughs> no, so you were thinking of Marvin yeah. the Ro the depressed robot. That is awesome. You had Zaphod yeah. Peoplebrox, you had uh, Trinity or Trin? Mm. Trillion, yeah. Trillion. That's what it was. It was a girl, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was that was played by um, Oh, the the actress. I don't know what she was saying as it's, Oh, it's the cute actress from Elf. New girl. Oh. Zoe De Chanel. That's it. Yeah. Wait, Zoe Deschanel? Oh, yeah. was. Zoe Deschanel was Trillion. Yeah, wow. Uh, but I still can't but I still can't think of Martin Freeman's character, the main character of the movie. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, my point is, is that the first book, and I believe the second book, are actually pretty good. But after that, a different writer picks up the series and finishes it. And I didn't even finish all of it. It, it, it kind of went downhill pretty quickly. I've only seen it on TV like once, but it was enough to like know some of the references people made. So yeah, and the and the movie is more like inspired by the book rather than accurate. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. I feel like it's it's fairly close to the book. I don't know. If we're talking about crossover, his name's Arthur Dent. Arthur Dent. Arthur. That's what it was. Uh, that was. Wait, Arthur Dent? Like, yeah. now no, I'm thinking of Harvey Dent. Yes. Okay, Arthur Dent. Right. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> but. Talking about uh, sci-fi book to movies, um, while Hitchhiker's Guide wasn't the best, it was leagues above Ender's Game. Yeah, because I read that book as well. That book was fantastic. It's a great book. The movie was just dog weird. Shit. Yeah. Like it. The but book... hey, but hey, we have Harrison Ford. <laughs> so yeah, that but... makes up for it. <laughs> Yeah, I never, I've never read any of these sci-fi books. I just went to see the movies. Yeah. And for Ender's Game, I thought eh, it's a good, it's a good watch. If you never read the book, you know. Right. Like, Coming into it fresh. Yeah. You know. Right. But I, I, I have no basis to, like, I have no comparison. Yeah. Right. I never read the book. I thought it was okay. Um. So yeah, the Ender's Game book focuses more on, um, especially the end of the book, the last. Because I think that's where a big moral of the story of Ender's Game is, is like the last two chapters of the book. Because um, all this time he is being prepared to um, fight the buggers, right? Mm -hmm. He's just training and training and training and training, all running through these training simulations until this final simulation that's like the hardest one they're going to throw at him. And then he's ready to fight the buggers. But wait... Lol, JK, hey, you just you just committed mass genocide, yep. and just, then and then he is like distraught and just like torn up inside that he is like destroyed an entire species until he finds there's like one egg or something like that, yeah. and then later books of the series. Speaker of the Dead. Say what? Oh no, that's the the next book is Speaker for the Dead. You know more about that? I didn't read that one. My new. You, you know more than I do. <laughs> But I know that he mentally, telepathically speaks with the egg or something like that to find it a new home planet. And he's like, lol, sorry we killed your people. Here's a new planet. But I remember there being something about playgrounds or something. Oh, no, I'm thinking of um, in Ender's Game, there's a game that all the recruits can play on their like iPads. Um, and he like breaks the game. By going further and doing different things and then finding some giant skeleton lying down and turns yeah. into a playground. Honestly, the game ends up sounding like one of those like fever dreams you have or something. Yeah. Like, you don't really know how much... Because it, no, it doesn't really give anybody else's perspective on the game. It's kind of just like how much right. is happening actually to him and how much is... Right. Because they don't really <coughs> explain the game that much as to what the purpose... Like... They don't really know what, how much did they really program into that part. Right. 
I, I think that was just. I think even um, canonically, it's not supposed to be yeah. a big thing anyway. Um, but um, I was trying to think what else. What else happened in the news this week? Kirk, you just joined us. Hello. So um, make sure you speak up for us. Um, sure. The new game. Speaking of games, mm -hmm. a new game that's um, kind of taken a lot of people by storm right now. You guys are just playing over there. Is the Dragon Ball Fighters? Yeah. Um, actually, it's a yeah about two weeks old at this point. No, yeah. about three weeks actually. Um, yeah. So it's very popular, um, especially for fighting game fans, and both Dragon Ball fans as well. I definitely say it's something that's really. Oh, it's, it's something about it that is, makes it where both or all audiences, ca casuals and competitive alike, are attracted to it. It has that for the casual. It has an easy to get into. You have like a system of like auto combos, um, simple buttons of just three, four buttons to mainly use at your uh, disposal, and you don't have to worry about so much complications of you know, moves or whatnot. And of course, then for those who are interested in Dragon Ball series, you no, know, you have the the, the best popular Dragon Ball characters like Goku, Krillin, and of course my favorite Yamcha. But then you had like Piccolo. I'm gonna have to redact the word popular. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, but then you had also have villains too like Frieza, Cell, Majin Buu. Uh, and the thing, the main thing. Nappa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't forget about Vegeta. Nappa. Vegeta. Oh, yes. And Vegeta. Vegeta. <laughs> Vegeta. But yeah, um, but I think also the big thing that's also. Um, What's great about it is the visual design, because the game is the, uh, what they call 2.5D, where it's a 2D movement back and forth, but the environment is in 3D. So when you stick out your foot, if you're close enough to a certain character, the foot actually goes like in front of the character to a certain extent. Interesting. That's how like, it was developed. So you have to be a certain like um, distance to which character where it can hit. So it actually kind of like a yeah, it has a 3 ish background because so the foot. One guy's foot is in the foreground, and the other guy's foot is in the background. Interesting. So, the, actually, it's a popular um, design for 2.5D in fighting games in general. So, it's not like um, the last DBZ game I played was Budokai 2. Right. Or 3. Mm -hmm. So, in those games, it was like a, a you could pivot on, right. a, on a circular plane. So, it's a full 3D. Correct. Okay. This is more, actually, like the more stable um, type for like Street Fighter or um, Marvel vs. Capcom, where everything's in 2D. But they call it 2.5 because in some aspects it's th 3D environment. So yeah. you have a background and foreground. And it's cell shaded, right? Because it, oh, yeah. it looks amazing. It and, does. and speaking of that, let's also get into the visually amazing. The best part about it, the developers do an amazing job to pay attention to so much detail to, from the manga and the show where they actually do the motions of all the moves and so forth. Nice. And even the best part about it, they have special Easter eggs. Where, for example, if you pick, um, if you actually defeat Goku, or Super Saiyan Goku against Frieza, on Planet Namek when it's about to be destroyed, and so it would normally be like a regular KO. However, it plays out the entire scene where nice. Frieza got pissed off and tried to, <laughs> to shoot um, Goku as he about to teleport and leave, and he blows back the, um, with the Command Mayor Wave and destroys Frieza. Nice. Like, it actually plays that scene out. So it's it's a little bit. So it's that's its own version of like the more the fatalities. Kind of thing, in the but sense, you have to be in a certain, in a certain condition, yeah, right? Yeah. But like the thing is, like even um, in the beginning, if you pick Goku and Frieza on Planet Namek before it got destroyed, mm -hmm. it plays a scene where Frieza kills Krillin and Goku turns to Super Saiyan. Nice, like it actually plays to that. That's much, awesome. Like every single aspect of it, as far as the visual design, is yeah. like perfect. The detail from the manga and the anime. That's really cool. So it's really awesome. Um, but yeah, it's a very popular game. Like, how many characters are on the roster? Uh, initially. It's about, as of now, it's about 23, but there are announcements for a season pass of eight more um, characters, and so a lot of people are guessing like they may get characters from Dragon Ball, or Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, I was gonna ask is how many uh, supers are there right now? Um, so I know Dragon Ball Super mm -hmm. brings out a whole new cast of people, you know. Oh yeah, Great um, pantheon really. Yeah, so for Dragon Ball Super, you have characters like Hit, a famous assassin from another universe. Slight spoilers for those who do not know about Dragon Ball Super. Very Me. good anime. I haven't seen it yet. Really? Um, actually, yes. Dragon Ball Super is a really good anime. Um, good, good sequel to Z series. But definitely watch it. Um, characters like... Beerus? Yes. Beerus, the god of destruction. They have Black Goku. Black, um, got Goku Black. I'm trying to think. Goku Black. 
They have, they have uh, blue versions of both. Yeah, and right? yes, they're also the Super Saiyan gods of Goku and Vegeta. And of course, if you um, really want to wa know about more about that, definitely watch the Super series. It's I was gonna really say, you're losing me. Okay, mm -hmm. so are there gods to the Super Saiyans, or are you saying that like Super so, Saiyan one, two, three, four, God? So there is levels, yes. Yeah. So, so God is a new level. Correct. And actually, um, they didn't didn't they be like it's not necessarily God, but it is a, a level above like Super Saiyan three. Right. And there's but there's actually a level beyond what could be a God as well. Okay. And that's later on in the series that. I will not no, spoil so, details about that. However, um, yeah, so like I said, as far as the game, um, they will add more characters. The visually is amazing. The gameplay is, feels right at home. It's comfortable for anyone to get into. Like, you don't have to be a pro player to get into it. Like, it's fun. I mean, even if you're not a fighting game person, you love it. Sure. Um, cool. I'm gonna have to go, once we're done here, I'm, I'm gonna go maybe do a match or two. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely. We have it. We um, have some friends that are playing it right now. They're, I mean, they don't really play fighting games that much, but they enjoy like. What sure. do you mean not that much? I see them all the time playing it. Well, like, <laughs> well, our friend Jason, just fighters in general, not just. But, well, yeah, one of our friends, no, Jason, he, he's not much of a fighter person. Yeah. But he actually likes the game, and he's just like, every time I bring it over, like, yeah, let me know when you're gonna play it. I'll play it with you. <laughs> also, also, something to note for uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, it, it recently got announced to be part of Evo, I believe. Yes. So it made what like top the top nine games or something for Evo. Right. So those who do not know, Evo is a um, one was regarded as the world biggest fighting game tournament, and basically the thing is um, it picks out certain games like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and some of our games to showcase for the tournament, and players from around the world, from Korea, South America, Europe. Africa, uh, Middle East, like you name it. Like around the world. Yes, yeah. literally around the world. And they come to Las Vegas where at Mandela Bay where it's usually held. Um, it's basically been running for over 20... It's, it's been a while, yeah. 20, 20 Are you plus years? It's yeah. been that long? Yeah. yeah cause recently, like, ever since like the first, like what, Street Fighter 1 or 2, they've been going? Yeah, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, I believe, was the first one. Because it came at 96 called Battle of the Bay. And a couple years later over time, they started renaming to Evo. Once it got more popular, more bigger over time, um, yeah, and the Street Fighter was like the main yep. thing, and which it is still so this very day. That's the mainstay course of um, for games to showcase. But um, of course, you have Street Fighter, you have Marvel vs. Capcom series, like just in general, Mortal Kombat, um, f fighter from like various like animes or whatnot, yeah. or in other like games that you know, grow up or get popular over series, you no. Know, not only in the U.S., but also in Japan or other regions. So, um, basically been going on for years and years. And recently, um, as of since 2013, beforehand, um, Smash Brothers yeah. actually made a major comeback. It used to be at EVO for a while until 2009, or 2008, between 2008 and 2009, before it fell off the map. But then you know, the Smash community had their own circuit of um, tournaments. And then eventually made a comeback in 2013. And both Melee and Smash 4 eventually. So, what was it that got uh, removed from Evo this year? So the thing about it is that um, was a, also a big controversy about it is uh, Fortune um, of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite yeah. did not make it in the cut. Oh, I see. Um, it's a lot of speculation of the reasons why it didn't make it in the cut. Should they even announce why? Well, the the thing is this. Um, I actually when researching through tweets and so forth. And a lot of people were saying, well, it didn't get, get that much support. Because um, uh, apparently, um, the Capcom announced it only shipped about 1 million um, copies. Oh. It didn't sell that much of those copies, but it shipped around that much to the stores. Um, but a lot of people were upset about it because you know, the game was gameplay is great. However, it's the, the presentation, um, the design of the characters, the user, user face, everything was just felt really it was just it, it looked horrible um so some of the character designs like they really, the lighting was bad they looked pale they looked way were you guys playing this a few weeks ago here at the bar um at one point we were um i thought it looked just about the same as no that was marvel Capcom 3. oh and this is ultimate you're talking yeah about. oh okay. well this is yeah infinite. infinite infinite came out um in september of last year okay and um the thing was before it was announced um in December 2016, 
and everyone was like, oh, cool, it's been a while, because, um, you know, Disney is known for having Marvel rights, and Disney used to um, license, you know, they license games out, and they know that he used to have a relationship with Capcom back since Super Nintendo days, so I think Disney was like, well, you know what, let's give a chance to try to, you know, give a license to Marvel, or to um, Capcom, because Marvel vs. Capcom is a very popular uh, crossover series. Sure. So give that, the people what they want. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, when it came out or was like being showcased for the first time in gameplay, it just didn't look right to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, the characters, like yeah, Captain America's head, was like very <laughs> squish, and like his uh, shoulders were like kind of covering up part of his neck. I see. <laughs> As well was like Spider-Man. A little too much Super Soldier Serum going on there. Yes, way too <laughs> much. But um. The thing was, I researched into it, and I do study on the video game industry. So they apparently they think the reason why they look so more realistic versus like more animation on um, comic sports, comic book style, was because um, many didn't think Americans would like or appreciate the uh, animation of like Japanese. Uh, art That's work. the dumbest thing I think yeah, I've ever heard. Good. Yeah, but of course, like you didn't see me rolling my eyes, but it was there. Right. right. And um, also, of course, the roster because you know with the mis with very noticeable there's no x-men or fantastic four characters well that's because that? of the merger well or the that that's because of the rights and marvel marvel has been playing nice with fox for years yes and no because um they said that the characters rights in general does not affect like film rights or whatnot would not affect like uses of any of the characters they would have catcom would have the free use of those characters sure however on the business side Capcom, I mean, Disney and Marvel were looking at Fox where, yeah, we would have X-Men characters in the game, but when it comes to like, oh, well, the X-Men characters are here, they're going to have a movie coming out, we can go see that movie, but the thing is, as a result, Fox would get the money for that because they had the film rights to it versus oh. uh, Disney and Marvel would, and they wouldn't like that. Gotcha. That's pissy. So yeah. basically, yeah, the business is to <laughs> hurt the game to spite the the movie producers. Right. It's like that's what I just said. Like oh. Marvel and Fox just like yeah. don't play yeah. nice yeah. at all because they don't want you know another company to benefit, but in the long run, as far as promotional wise, right, for another type of media. And that's why I'm kind of thankful that Disney bought those bought Fox. Right. I don't know if that actually no. went through. Or yeah, yeah, they bought 20th went, Century Fox. Is that the same as buying Fox? Well, it is, no, but some of the some of the aspects. Okay. Right. So, but of course that's going to take some time or of course a year or so to sell things out, how they're going to divide it up or break things down. So, but as a result, you know, with Marvel Capcom came, coming out and not presenting any characters that were very popular like Wolverine, Magneto, Storm, Sentinel, I mean, those characters were the staple of the series. Right. Yeah. So, a lot of people was a backlash about it. Like the they Wolverine were, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, him and Reed were like neck and neck and everything, every single series, like, is those two going at it. So, as a result, backlash happened, and people were upset and pissed off about it. But many players, um, like pro players, were like trying to you know, say, hey, it's not a bad game. It's a game plays well and so forth. But the general audience was like, this is not, where happened to all the characters? Right. Why we don't have all this going on? It's not entertaining on? anymore. Yeah. And that's, and that's where, probably where it affects a lot of the Right. So, yeah, support for like less than 100, like at a point, it was, like less than 100 people will sign up for tournaments for it. Uh, on the, on, yeah, in the long run, so they did have a small circuit, but it was not no more than like almost three hundred. Not enough to have it as a, a main, like a, a right. main stage kind of. So the Evo, um, the the had, had, you know, in the sense they probably saw it as like yeah, and Marvel, you no, know, had kind of, and of course Marvel themselves probably seen what's going on. They're like, I don't think it'd be a good idea to try to showcase a game that you're not gonna have that much support behind it. Right. So that could have been that's the biggest speculation from my end of how what's sure. going on. So, Makes sense. Yeah, it's it's, it's sad though because Marvel vs. Capcom, like I said, very popular series. I mean, Marvel comics uh, fans and Street Fighter fans and whatever games and whatever representation come together and one roof is like was it's amazing. Sure. So, but just to see this in a situation where it's just not really getting support in once and falling apart, you know, it's it's heartbreaking. Well, I, I've only played Marvel Capcom a handful of times mm. on an arcade machine, but I remember every single time I played, I would try and get Venom as one of my characters, because I've always loved Venom. Oh, yes. But that leads me into, have you guys seen the trailer for Tom Hardy's Venom? It just launched no. like this yes, week. Yes, I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it looks pretty damn good. Uh, granted, I listened, I, 
I watched it and didn't have any audio when I watched the trailer, um, but still, it, it looked pretty good. Um, but from what I remember, this is this is all taking place still before the Disney Fox merger, so there is no Spider-Man in the movie. So I, I don't know how that's going to. This is like a go. personal crisis, Venom. Yeah, I know, right? Play? Like I think. <laughs> well, Venom has his own comics, and Venom has his own run, and I, I would assume his own villain base. You know. Yeah. Um, but. You know, it is going to be an origin story, so there's going to be your first act of the movie is setting up him being Venom. The second act is going to be him channeling his powers and figuring that out, and the third act is going to be him solving some sort of problem. With his so powers. is it is it is it like uh, is it trying to make Venom be like a hero in this movie, or just he's just yeah. doing whatever he does as Venom? I would probably go as anti-hero. Yeah, because okay. he's basically just, that's what he is in the comics mainly. Yeah. Like, but I mean, he didn't start that way, though. Right. Like, he started as pure villain. So right. they're just, like, kind of skipping over that whole... Right. Probably. Know. I mean, you could do that. Eddie, I mean, later on, Eddie Brock is, like, you know... He is. Uh, right. so he just likes to rival Peter. It's just... It's weird to think of a villain being the good guy completely. Because the whole point of an antihero is he's still a bad guy. He's just doing some not-so-bad things. And I don't know if I don't... I don't well, see Venom ever actually... The, being a bad guy, it's gonna be hard for me. Well, there's plenty of instances in the Marvel, just in the Marvel Comics universe, of villains turning a new leaf, especially recently. Um, a lot of the recent villains have come in and turned a new leaf or, or become a hero or even taken up the mantle of a classic hero. Um, like uh, the, Green, the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, is now like President of the United States or something. That's not always a great thing, um, but. <laughs> I mean, I, I did read today where Doctor Doom, um, oh yeah, the most example. evil character in Marvel Beloved history, had right. a country. Like. Now he's Iron Man. Is he? Yeah. Does he still have the color scheme? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. Okay, okay. Yeah, still the green and silver color scheme. Nice. Uh, with he's got a thing on his chest now. But it's small, but it looks really cool. He still looks like Doctor Doom. He doesn't look like Mar- I can Iron see that. Man. Okay. Um, but I mean. In, in the comics, I forget exactly what's going on with Tony, um, but Doctor Doom is Iron. Like that is who he is now. So, um, but yeah, I mean, whether it's a whether it's a, a personal development story and it's all just kind of taking place in him, I don't think I would want to see a movie based on him against the symbiote that's on him at the same time. I feel like that's too condensed of a story. I can see that. Like these parts, like probably like. Dive into that a little bit later on. Sure, that's, that's, that's a second was. movie kind of thing. Like you can see, like that probably the eventually maybe Maximum Carnage. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was gonna, gonna go into. My 40. favorite. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Or that, the, that's what you do. Or even that. the separate anxiety where the yeah. other um, offsprings of the symbiote. Because yeah, there's a number of them. Aren't right. there? There's so, several. Yeah. Scream. It's, I know it's five. So I think then it was one. Scream. I think it's <laughs> Chaos. It's, it's like two or three more. Yeah. But yeah, there's Carnage, yeah. of course. See, and to me, that would make a perfect Venom movie. It was Venom versus Carnage. Oh, yeah. You like, know, no doubt. Yeah, there. absolutely. But, but I don't think that should be the no. first film. I think the first film should set up who Venom is and set up this, this micro universe. And then in the second film, you breed in Cletus, Cletus Cassidy. You know, maybe Eddie Brock is like arrested for drunk driving or something. <laughs> and that's where he runs into Cletus Cassidy or, and maybe right. a piece of the symbiote. Jumps off him and goes to Cletus. Yeah. I probably see that like as a tease at the very end. Like you know how yeah, I don't know how very famous Marvel is for like the yeah. post credit scenes. Yeah. Could be it. It, it could be, you even have to name it. You could just say a serial killer is on the loose. Right. Yeah, and then Eddie Brock's like, let's go solve some shit. Or you know? he even, like must himself just like he bumps somebody and he get a swamp goes to his face, but he don't say his name. And he might yeah. get, try to guess that too. So. Oh yeah, it be some ways you know tapping in there. You you, know, you that know. reminds me that not all of the Marvel end of movie scenes were great. Yeah. I'm thinking specifically of uh, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, uh, especially the second one. Uh, uh, I didn't see either really. Okay, so. well you didn't miss a lot. Yeah, <laughs> personally I don't I don't really like Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. Uh, he's a little yeah, too I, emo. I grew up with Tobey Maguire, so I was gonna say I like Tobey. Uh, <laughs> very unpopular opinion, but Tom Holland. Is Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah, you can't get any better than Tom Holland. But at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 2, when they were trying to set up their Sinister Six and trying to set up their their universe there before whatever happened with that, 
liquid down the drain. Uh, the final scene there was um, one of the one of the villains was in, oh, in jail, and Rhino. suddenly, yeah, and the kingpin is like in jail or something like that, or a representative of the kingpin or something like that. But um, I don't know. I feel like um, I feel like yeah. Maybe now we can get into a little bit of the kingpin. Like, we can get into some of that crossover of the TV and the movies of the Marvel stuff. Mm-hmm. So maybe we can see the kingpin actually come into, like, a Marvel movie and against Tom Holland, Spider-Man. Holy shit. That yeah. would be an awesome... I should have to do that. I just got way too excited um, about that. Because, <laughs> like, now... I know, like, originally back then, when Sam Raimi was um, held the original trilogy... Right. The original plan was to actually set up for the Century 6. Because probably, like, six Spider-Man movies at the time... Because they'll probably be like, no, of course, yeah, Green Goblin, then Doc Ock, then, of course, including Sandman, and eventually Mysterio, um, Scorpion, and Vulture. However, of course, the studio decided some things otherwise, and then Spider-Man 3 happened. Yeah. Because I think Spider-Man 2, the original Spider-Man 2, Tobey Maguire, is probably one of my favorite superheroes. Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorites. agree. Really good. Um, probably one of my favorites of all time. But yeah, that idea kind of flopped because some things happened between the studio and the director. Well, from what I heard, it was like Sam Raimi turned to Tobey Maguire. Or Toby kind of came and like nudged elbows. He's like, "Yo, it'd be cool, Sandman. <laughs> should totally do Sandman." Yeah, I, Sam Raimi was like, "But I really like Venom." And then somebody else said, "Well, you got to have this guy in the movie or something like that." So yeah. that's where you got. Who was the third one that we filmed? There was three. Yeah, the third. Was the, it was. It was. Um, Hobgoblin was the third one. The Green Goblin too, because um, Harry, no Harry Osborn, right. turns to the Green Goblin too. Oh, is that, is that like the name of it? I yeah, thought, it, oh, okay. yeah, it because like in the comics, there's two Green Goblins in the sense. I didn't know that because mm-hmm. I know that in the in the comics, Harry is the Hobgoblin at one point. The uh, Hobgoblin is an, actually a different character too. Oh, is he? Yes, he's totally different. Uh, I forgot his actual name. I don't know what I'm thinking of, but um. But but that was the studio trying to tell Sam Raimi you got to close the story mm. with the trilogy. When you don't have to close, you don't have to have a trilogy. You don't have to close the story. You can leave it open. You can have seven I mean, movies. Back in the Tim McGuire era, with the Harry there, Potter, huh? There wasn't a huge superhero following like <laughs> there is now. Right. So I can see the idea of saying, "Hey, let's close it because we don't want to string this thing along." Yeah. Because they, they probably didn't want to ruin it, right. and somehow. Yeah. Spider Man Three was them not ruining it. But the biggest problem with that movie, I think everyone can agree, is Topher Grace. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, I love Topher Grace. I love that '70s show. I, I hope one day he will release his Star Wars edit to the public so that we can see that. But Topher Grace is not Eddie Brock. Oh no. Eddie Brock is a football player. He's like a linebacker. Uh, he's a big guy. I mean, Topher Grace is an evil I Like, no, he, not he, 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 he didn't no look the part. He couldn't really act the part. No, he didn't know? at all. Like, there was nothing similar at no. all. Toby McGuire was just a piece of shit throughout that movie. He was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Peter Pokey. The whole movie. <laughs> we got a great gift out of it, though. Which one? The emo him walking no. down the street. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, the, the meme of him, like, looking sideways, you know? Yeah. Uh, Oh gosh. Bad times. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why I'm blanking, but um, Christian, no, uh, the guy who plays Anakin in uh, Episode One, Christian, hey, or Episode uh, Two, yeah, two Hayden Christensen. Hayden, Hayden Christensen. Yeah, Hayden Christensen. It's like yeah. Topher Grace and, frankly, Tobey Maguire are just like Hayden Christensen, where they're perfectly fine actors, but their dark side is just no, really, not that really good. whiny. Yeah, it's not you know, good. Anakin to me was perfectly okay, but when he went all dark side and yeah, uh, cried like a much. little bitch, he was better as a kid. <laughs> yeah, that's why so. I, I like Phantom Menace better than the other two movies of the prequels. But I wish I didn't. Yeah. I, I wish I liked like uh, Revenge of the Sith better. I like the, I like the fight scenes of, of yeah, yeah the Revenge of the Sith is my favorite, but. You know, I of the prequels. Yeah, let's, let's, let's clarify here. Let's make sure we clarify that sentence. I appreciate the. You know, we don't have to get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> of the prequels, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so what did you what did you think of um, the Last Jedi? Okay, so when I watched it, I was blown away. Like to me, I don't 
think about movies when I watch them. I just kind of let them yeah, hit yeah. me. But you experience the yeah. moment. So to me, it was amazing. Sure. I had zero complaints. It was great. And then I ran, read all like the, the fanboy complaints. I was like, honestly, they kind of have a point. Yeah. So now I'm kind of That's afraid to watch too. it a second time because it's kind of like, what if I now could only see it through this lens of angry right. about the pre about the originals? Because when I, when I watched it, I, there was nothing wrong with it. But looking back on it, there was a lot of even in the in the guise of yes, it's a sci-fi movie. Of course, some things are you know they're gonna push limits. Some things don't make sense. Like I'm assuming this isn't a spoiler. Um, yeah, no, you know, spoiler heavy. You know, like this when the ship goes into hyperspace and cuts through the, the Star Destroyer. It's the badassest thing that's ever it happened was. in the Star but Wars also, universe. If if every ship can do that, why don't they just have three ships that destroy all the big guys and that's the entire fight. Why, well, because why your whole rebellion all? was very small. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> rebellion wasn't that big. And, and if they had just done a small like X-Wing, it wouldn't have done that much damage. It just would have like... And, right. and that's the matter. Like, they have limited resources and <coughs> so, uh, that, so... All right, but that was... Oh, I, I don't like the idea of that being possible. Like... I'm okay with that if it's like, oh, well, the, you know, it was because the deflectors were down or because this specific ship. But they didn't really explain it was, a lot of it. They were just like, okay, well, as long at as At any point, she could have turned around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that, that's kind of my issue is that they didn't explain the nicheness of it. Of, okay, well, all you're saying is as long as the Republic has the money for these ships, why didn't the Empire do that to the Republic? Because the Empire has way more money. Yeah. So they the could Empire, kamikaze all day and it wouldn't matter. Exactly. Right. So... I liked it, and it, yes, that was like the most beautiful scene I've seen in the past five movies. It's amazing. But I just, yeah, there's little things looking back, I was like, well, okay, that doesn't make sense. Do you well, know what I was thinking of the other day? Is I was thinking of, uh, so the one the one thing that bothered me about the movie, and the one thing that I noticed while I was watching it was I was like, because I went in thinking, and I had this awful like thought as I went in, and I was like, hey, remember how uh, The Force Awakens was pretty much just a new hope? And I was like, oh, thanks, brain, appreciate that. <laughs> So I went into watching the second, this um, uh, Last Jedi, and I just kept going. I was just training on an island with an old Jedi, huh? Huh? <laughs> Sounds familiar, huh? And then at the end of the movie, I was like, huh? You're fucking off, huh? <laughs> I see. I get it. And he was like, it's salt. Fuck you. Yeah. No. no come the on. The whole kamikaze thing you talking about the deflector shields and all that. In episode six, there was an A-wing that freaking rammed into their bridge on the what was it? Yeah, Star Destroyer. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> and that, that was one of the Corellian ships downed into the Death Star. So what's the difference there? But that didn't dist- that that was it the Star dis- Destroyer. It was in the Death Stars. Oh no, I see. It, but the Star, Star Destroyer hit the Death Star. Star right. Destroyer. It, it fell down because it was out of commission. Well, your problem much. there is. Why is gravity affecting these things in space? Yes, I don't know. <laughs> and like I said, that's why... For, Human limitations. I wanted right. some leeway, but... Right. I do actually see what you're saying. We're, Jakku was, is new Tatooine, and then there's Right, new absolutely. <laughs> uh, but then the, the one thing that I, I didn't realize until, like, the other day, I was walk, I was driving around, like, kind of stoned, and I was, like, thinking about it, I was like... Only kind. Of. Right, that's the only kind. <laughs> that's the only way to drive around. Uh, is those little ice foxes, those crystal yeah. foxes... That? Something about that, like I was, I was thinking about it. I was like, "Wait a minute, there is nothing outside of that cave. Where? What is their food source?" <laughs> I was just being an absolute <laughs> they thrive on the salt of, uh, salty fans, right? Apparently, <laughs> God, uh, that yeah, the end of that movie made me kind of mad, and the fact that Luke dies, I, okay. I don't know why Luke died. The, I mean, even even uh, was it too. Mark Hamill himself was like, "Why did I die?" Yeah, in the original, like right after screening broadcast, it was like. I didn't expect that. That's so, hilarious. Yeah. No. Okay, I'll, I'll amend that. The ending did leave me a bit on side, but until the last ten minutes, because the ending was wrong for a number of reasons. One, Finn not dying. I'm sorry, but it would have been a lot more heroic don't if you, he died. Don't you do that, man. Oh, well, I like Finn. <laughs> like, Two, I saw it setting up as he dies, you know, and that thing gets torn yeah. off, like, just broken to pieces. Yeah. Right. And then the girl saves him. And so. then, if, too, if Luke is going to die anyway... And Kylo was going to try to kill him anyways. Right. What's the symbology of Luke surviving? Because either way, Kylo is still evil because he tried to murder him. Right. And Luke is still dead because he dies. <laughs> so <laughs> Kylo could have just successfully killed Luke. And right. the emotions would have been the same. Nothing would have changed. Right. So, I, I mean, it was super cool that he could, like, astral Force, project. Yeah, astral project himself. But that didn't... Why did he have to do that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So... Yeah, and then there was that, and then also the, the weird. What is the time lapse between 
between the next two movies? Because if they're restarting a whole rebellion, are they going to somehow rebuild the rebellion in three years? Are they going to like time yeah. lapse ten years and Ray's going to go from twenty five to thirty five? Right. Or however old you want to picture Ray, you know your your boat. You also well, got to explain how Carrie Fisher's character died. That's but. that's going to be your your buffer there. And honestly, and when I was watching the film and and the, and the thing blew up and she flew out, I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, there it is. I mean, that's like a perfect scene right. to like say she died. Yes, but nope, force powers. Right, and I was like, why? <laughs> and why do you have to do that? I don't know if you've seen it, seen it or not, but there's a gif going around like, uh, and it makes fun of Carrie's addiction to. Cocaine, but it's like <laughs> <laughs> she's flying through space. Wait, there was cocaine on that ship. Let me go back. <laughs> I left my cocaine on board. Yeah, it's, it, it's kind of bad, but also funny at the same time. So it, it, it explains why she had to go back. So see, that one I'm willing to overlook only That's because hilarious. in the books she does get force trained. So okay, I was like, okay, fine. No, Homage no, you can't. No, you can't cherry pick what the about the stuff you want in Zahn's books. I fucking want Thrawn, okay? Yeah, absolutely. I, I will, want he that. He can cherry pick how much in, he wants. He was in um, Heroes, was it? Or Star- Rebels. Isn't he in Rebels? I don't watch that. I don't watch I don't, I don't where either. the Republic I wins. I heard it was really good. Really good show. Yeah, I heard Rebels is great. And I, I think Th- Thrawn is in Rebels. Um, but again, is, why is Thrawn in Rebels and you didn't do the Thrawn show? Yeah. Is is Rebels canon? I don't remember what's canon yeah, anymore. Absolutely. It is. Okay, yeah. Yeah, only the I think certain comic books are not canon anymore. So all the books are still canon. No, they all the old books. They've made not a canon couple anymore. new books, but majority of of yeah. Yeah, like the, some of the comics back then and so forth. But the other, my other main complaint, I I enjoyed it at the time, but the whole Rose going to find the hacker thing. Yeah. Yeah. Zero. But yeah. That, I, you shouldn't have filler in a movie. That's all that was. Yeah. That said, the hacker seemed like a cool character. I hope he comes back. Yeah, but Del Toro's character. Yeah, yeah. he was kind of cool. <laughs> but speaking of characters that yes. need to come back, Phasma again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are you gonna dress up Gwendolyn Christie like one of the coolest characters yeah, in well, Game of Thrones makes to be a silver a really fucking cool tall yeah, stormtrooper yeah. and she dies like that in both movies? Yeah. Well, right. she didn't really die in the she, first she one. Got a trash can yeah. <laughs> Sure. But what I'm saying is that like. You have we have not seen her physical ability in the movies yet. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, she's supposed why, to be like what the, the commander of the did. squadrons or whatever. Yeah, so. yeah. Like what makes her earn that? Right, and after, and like I said, after seeing her in Game of Thrones, when I first saw her in The Force Awakens, I was like, oh yeah, here we go. Five minutes of yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> and then she died. I'm like, what? Stop! What are you doing A this for? Comedic death too. Right. You know? It's not even good. Yeah. So I don't even know, man. Speaking of deaths. Like, the one thing that I just noticed, like, that just threw me off, Snoke. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Um, I want backstory in the films, not in the comics. Yeah, I'm like, wait, does anyone know who Snoke is? Yes. Oh, wait, there's backstory in there's comics? There's apparently in comics, yes. Oh, for fuck's sake. But, like, like, um, wait, who's Snoke? Like, how did All Kyle Ren's... All we saw in the first movie was there's this giant image of him. He looks fearsome, like, oh, he's the And new he looks, threat. like, 30 stories tall. Yes. And then... In this, this next movie, he's maybe, like... Holding, like Maybe eight feet tall at Holding most. Ray and yes. like my, my torture, all that stuff. Now there is a fan theory that he astral projected himself there and that and he's not actually dead, just like Luke did. There was physical body parts on the floor. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. That man was cut in half. That doesn't mean anything. He won't be back in the shot. Also the fact that oh I can sense you doing whatever, but oh I'm gonna get stabbed through the middle yeah. without See, sensing it. The lead up yeah. to me was cool because I love the like the tricking of oh he just realized we've gone. I thought he would realize it at the last second and he didn't. Right. Like I wanted I love the arc and just don't don't do the fall. Just lead right. up and then because like you don't really get a. a explanation of how or why how Kylo Ren was influenced by yeah. him to turn to the dark side is, or how, become Sith. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I saw something in him and Snoke had him at a point and I had to stop him like, okay, where did he come from in this yeah. sense? Like, yeah. How did, how did he, Snoke yeah. rise to power? Yeah. yeah, He was like a worse emperor. Like, at least the emperor used the lightning, you know, so you knew, even if he didn't, you know, do the waving lightsaber thing. You knew he was still really powerful, right? Right. But we don't know that. Well, Snoke see, and that's powerful. And if you go back to what George Lucas said, Star Wars is like poetry. So that means that in in this new trilogy here, Snoke should have been an emperor character. Correct. You had emperor in the prequels. You had him still alive in the other three, yeah. and now you have a new character that has to fill that role in this new trilogy. And, and now he's just d- gone. Haven't gonna have. Right. 
Um, That's also the dudes that like the new directors for the second movie compared to the first of the new trilogy. Yes, Colin, Colin Tevereau. Because uh, from what my friend told me, he's, he's oh, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, my friend uh, right. who follows this stuff more frequently, he said that Disney pretty much gave both directors free reign of the story. That's dumb. And they didn't say like, hey, you got to follow this first director. No, that's, that's idiotic. So that's the and, in a way that's Disney's fault. But <clears throat> well, honestly, I feel like. I feel like maybe I should disrespect Ryan Johnson for those decisions he made because you don't because if somebody cooks half of a Thanksgiving dinner, you don't walk in and start making cheeseburgers instead. Yeah. You finish the Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. That that's what you do. So if somebody sets up a weird lightsaber and a hidden chest in a in a new Mos Eisley, you know, in the basement, yeah. you follow through on that. Like you have to do that. Instead of like, no, we ain't gonna talk about that. No, nah, Ray's parents aren't even. Don't worry about that. I know they tease their parents well, as, so much. I know. I think, I'm okay with the fact that her parents are not anything special. It's just like her parents just, you know, they're just like. It says I can get over that. That's easy. Like I, I understand. It. I don't, it don't have to be like everything had to be like a special moment in a sense. It's like, oh, your parents are actually just junkies. They're not. So there's another Reddit theory mm-hmm. that says, uh, and this is this one's actually kind of complicated. This theory states that Ray is Anakin. Like Ray embodiment? Yes. Okay. And that Ray and Anakin are both just imbo- physical embodiments of the, of the Force. And that's where you get the balance of the Force, whereas Anakin turned evil or something like that. Now you have Ray, who's. She, I don't she's know. She's more of a Ray Jedi. She, she absolutely opinion, is, yeah. So. I want to be a Ray Jedi. I don't. <coughs> I don't see her as a great Jedi. Not how I want. Also, sorry. Why is she gonna get a double, double lightsaber? She fights with a long stick. Give yeah. her a long stick. Yeah, absolutely. But mm. oh, she could totally be a new Darth Maul. <laughs> but, yeah. And also for me, the the ending was interesting. Which one? The very the very ending where you see the little kid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So the idea of the Force is that okay, so it's not actually linked to certain people uh, like a lineage. It's like anyone can have that. Sense, but sure. Just yeah, it would right. make sense. Sure. It's just interesting, like to see, like, huh? So he just used the force like it's nothing. And he's like, doo, 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 doo. push the push the broom. Yeah, yeah. yeah that grab guy. the broom, pick it up. So <laughs> I'm like, oh okay. Yeah, some Fantasia shit going on. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, that's Disney. That is so so Disney. But also, it reminded me a lot of Harry Potter when when. Uh, Harry walked into the Weasley's house for the first time when the dish was washing itself. Yeah. <laughs> it reminded me a lot of that. But like, if you have magic. Force, if you have force powers where you need to sweep the... No, I'm not going to sweep the floor. I'm going to learn how to like block lasers and shit. Like, what's the why you work? Yeah. <laughs> kind of like what you were saying, Well, if uh, people, you know, if you put bring half of a uh, thing to dinner, you have to do the other half. Right. Thing. For the same thing, under the same guise, I want them, if they're going to leave something, I want them to leave it. Like Ray's parents. Okay, so they're apparently just random, you know, awful people, dirtbags. Right. I want them to leave them as dirtbags. I've accepted that. I don't need an answer anymore. Right. If, so if the third movie comes in, yeah. I don't need them saying, that, like, no, they actually yeah. are special people. And like, like Luke dying. I don't like that, but you know what? Fine. Luke's dead. Don't right. bring Luke back. So every plot point that you Except close... Except Force ghost. Yeah, yeah. And that's fine. It's yeah, hell. sure. But Whatever. If, if you close a plot point, close it. Like, as much as I wish Snoke had a bigger role, if you bring him back, unless it's a really good way, it's going to be kind of like, well, now that other part of the movie was... BS, you yeah. know? Because enough part of, uh, just like we are discussing earlier, the filler, enough of episode 7, 8, whatever, was eight was eight. filler. If you bring Luke back or bring Snoke back, then that's even more filler. I don't want any right. more filler. So leave the ends end and leave the opens to, you know, to, to continue. Exactly. Give us, a, so. give us a final answer on what we're all thinking. So. Well, I think that's actually a great point to close this podcast. <laughs> Uh, that was a that was a great huh. thank you yeah. for that that was great um, so that's just we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up here that's uh, so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed listening to this um, again that was Ian and Tyler and Kirk that left he's back up at the bar doing something else uh, he's playing fighters again Ian with an E <laughs> uh, right Ian with an E <laughs> uh, so make sure you uh, go check out our we have a Facebook group. I don't know if you guys are a part of that. We're, we have a Facebook group um, that is. Uh, sorry, I Blessed lost. The I just lost everything where I was for a, I checked <laughs> out for a second. Uh, we have a Blessed Under the Geek Facebook group. Uh, so we try and encourage people to go on there and talk and just kind of be nerdy and have nerdy conversations and talk about things. And um, 
even if you don't know if people are like really into a certain thing that you're into, just post something. Like, I'll go on there and post something that's like balls deep in Xenoblade Chronicles, and I don't care if you know what it is or not. Somebody else is gonna know what it is, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I totally hate that thing." <laughs> um, so go on there and check that out. We have a Twitter page uh, at Blessed Geekcast, and we're on YouTube as well. Uh, and then you can email us any kind of suggestions you want us to talk about next time, uh, and that's at that's Blessed Geekcast at gmail.com. We're still new to half of this stuff. So, anyway, uh, thanks for listening and joining us, and next time. Bye.